will make it! Sick! Send the chicks out. Remember to engage the rail. You keep falling down, I keep pushing you out and wish you were gone. You keep falling down, I keep pushing you out and wish you were gone. Oh, did you see that? Get out there, I reckon. If you ever talk to me, bring back the memories. This episode is presented by Destination New South Wales. When I was really young, I wanted to be a firewoman. <laughs> Go down the pole. <laughs> hey, my name is Chelsea Hedges. I'm 37 years old and I'm from Kingscliff, New South Wales. And I've won one world title. <laughs> that was sick. Oh, let's go. We're on. Wow. I think that just said it all. Yeah, the Rivals has got a little bit of banter going. Start a little Rivals WhatsApp chat and yeah, got the girls on there, Saucy and Lane and myself and Skaz and yeah, no, it's good fun. You take yourself back to those times, you know, of when we're on tour and you remember all these little things about them and we're all still competitive, but on the group chat, we're like, yeah, Sauce, get it. Hopefully you get the sickest ways and yeah, Skaz, yeah, Lano, like you'll do well. And we're like all kind of going, oh, I don't know if I'm even going to be able to get to, like, be able to physically surf for two hours. And we're like, no, you'll be right. You know, like, we're pumping each other up. Chelsea will be a super threat. She's just a really great surfer. She has really good style. She's a former world champion. She's definitely going to be one to watch. And, you know, she'd be a safe bet to win this for sure. She's on fire at the moment. She's surfing really good. So if it was coming down to just surfing, I'd probably say Chelsea. My money's on Chelsea for rival season two. She is in formidable form. She's fit, healthy, focused. She's always been a real tough competitor. She's an incredible surfer. I think she's actually probably one of the most underrated surfers that women's surfing has ever seen. Chelsea Hedges excels in all conditions, so it doesn't really matter what kind of surf she gets, which is kind of annoying. But I think for the wow factor that the audience are gonna be looking for, if she gets some peaky, barrely little beaches, she's just gonna, she's got such a great barrel style. I think that they'll be judging that pretty highly. If I can kind of challenge myself a little bit, try and find a little bit of juice, you know, maybe some, you know, four foot barrely beaches with a couple of turns, I think that'd be ideal for me. Always wanna challenge myself a little bit and try and, you know, try and make people go, oh, wow, that wave was sick. Maybe I might be on it, maybe I won't. <laughs> but that was a good wave. <laughs> Chelsea was actually one of the first girls to show us all how to pig dog. She was a genius at it. She'd go on boat trips and the guys were like, I can't, I can't pig dog like that. I can't, I'm, she's, she's mental. Like, how'd she get so good at pig dogging? Like, she's just, yeah, she was amazing. Charged when it got big. Backhand, forehand, she was so talented, you know, Chelsea. She's super talented. She's always a threat, always. Chelsea Hedges, or Chelsea Georgeson as she was known back then, built her formidable backside tube riding and world beating skill set on the reefs and beach breaks of Sydney's northern beaches. As a buck toothed grom, a chance encounter with one of the greatest female surfers of all time set her on a path of greatness that she never looked back from. Uh, I started surfing when I was 13 years old and I started surfing at Avalon Beach in Sydney. You know, there's a lot of negativity around, um, yeah, girls getting treated bad out in the water and stuff, but never had that experience in Avalon, um, if anything was the opposite. You know, you had to start your way up, you had to be respectful, and um, there was no way you were going to get the best wave out North Ave on a good day, that's for sure, but, you know, you learn to respect your elders and wait your turn, and it's super easy and super fun to grow up in Ave. No complaints there at all. Surfing was just starting to get really popular. You know, we had like Kelly Slater and Lisa Anderson used to come to Avalon quite often and surf in the Narrabeen Coke Classic. And yeah, I just wanted to be like those people. You know, they were, you know, in our eyes, the coolest people in town. And yeah, I was definitely fortunate enough growing up in Av and yeah, being friends with Benny Raymond, um, the Raymond family. And yeah, I used to go over to his place quite a bit and 
you know, do kids stuff, play the pool, whatever. And yeah, and Lisa would hang out with her family quite often when she'd come to stay and got to surf with her quite a few times and she kind of, you know, she'd kind of take us under her wing, you know, her and myself and my friend Gracie and, you know, she'd call us up and go, come on, Groms, come surfing. And you, of course, you could imagine us, we're like 13 years old, just going, yeah, oh my God, like, you know, this girls in the magazine, she's like the most best surfer in the world at the time. I'll take part responsibility for finding Chelsea. She, uh, I spent a lot of time in Avalon in Sydney and Australia on my times off and when I was on the Australia leg. And uh, she was probably tw 11, 12, and surfed with her little, her little one of her best friends who was also good. So there's these two girls. And, it, and then it was unusual to see girls that young rip, like surfing waves, like riding them and doing good turns and stuff. So it, you know, I took notice right away and I just mentioned to the team guy in Australia for Quicksilver to maybe give them some stuff, like product. Like that girl looks, like she surfs pretty good. Give her some, give her a wetsuit. Like, you know, give her some free stuff, she'll be happy. Yeah, it kind of took off from there. Got some stickers and little goodie bag and wetties and yeah, really, really thankful to Lise, yeah, for doing that and just, yeah, right spot at the right time, I suppose. And yeah, when I was a grandma, as soon as yeah, as soon as I saw Lisa and her surfing and definitely wanted to win a world title, but um, also just wanted to influence other, other surfers and like just be the best surfer in the world and make people turn their head and go, oh, wow, that girl surfs super good, you know. But definitely once I started doing comps was, yeah, for sure to win a world title. After the break, we take a deep dive into Chelsea's short but spectacular world tour career. People actually said to me uh, when I qualified last year, you know, you know, you can do what Taj did and and uh, not not do the tour and you know just do the QS again next year. And I thought about that for about a second and was like, no way, I'm doing the CT. <laughs> yeah, when I made it onto the tour, it was yeah a little bit um, surreal at first because it kind of happened pretty quick. I kind of probably at the time like I knew what the tour was all about but didn't really know what it was like when you got on tour so um, for me it was just like the most amazing experience ever like just it was like this is too ridiculously fun. She was like on her game all the time really progressive surfer just really really good maneuvers um, solid yeah I did not I did not like when she came on tour. <laughs> She'd rock up to an event, it'd be the first time she'd been there and she'd just own it, you know. She had a lot of raw natural talent. She's got flow and she's she's also critical and innovative. Like there's a lot of great attributes that came onto the tour at that time with a few of the girls. When Chelsea came on, she saw what was going wrong for us and actually corrected it for herself. So she brought that really fluid, powerful style. She's got the, you know, that kind of close stance and beautiful flow of Paco and then the absolute power and force of someone like Oki. She for sure has one of the best styles I've seen in a women's surfer in a long time. She reminds me a lot of like Luke Egan and Rob Machado kind of with the way her stance is with the flow of her surfing. Chelsea set women's surfing ablaze just with her amazing effervescence and passion for surfing and also ability to, to win and be the best in the world. You know, everyone had their weak side. So, you know, there were surfers that couldn't backside bow ride. There were surfers that, you know, hated surfing lefts or hated, you know, surfing back end if they were goofy foot. So if I could kind of have an all round, if I could surf big waves, I could surf barrels. And if I could, you know, do some turns, then have to be kind of going all right. And when I saw, you know, Chopu was, on the tour and Fiji and um, waves like that. We had the opportunities back back then to go to on boat trips like to the Mentor Eyes with Roxy and 
So I kind of um, tried to hone in on that a lot, just try to give it everything on those big barrel days because when you go to Chopu, you kind of want to be prepared. And yeah, I guess kind of for me, it was sort of like natural, like I wasn't too scared in a lot of those places. I don't know why, I think, um, I don't know, maybe growing up two brothers, <laughs> getting in wrestling matches all the time, maybe it was that. Critical backside hits, plenty of flow and a pension for packing big pits made Chelsea Hedges one of, if not the, greatest surfer of her generation. I think uh, love had lots to do with winning my first world title. Uh, meeting Jason uh, was you know, the best thing that could have happened to me in my life. It, you know, he gave me quite a lot of confidence uh, personally and you know, I think with confidence you can pretty much achieve anything. Winning the world title, obviously, it's that feeling you just, just, you know, as good as, you can't really explain it. Just small things will happen and then the next heat you go, okay, that just tunes in and, and then it gets better and you just slowly build, like it's a it's weird, weird thing, but you just feel like you're unstoppable, you know, on that day and obviously the waves were pretty amazing when we went to Honolulu and got probably some of the best backhand barrels ever got out there I think you know and that was just the icing on the cake was to like get Honolulu at like four to six foot perfect barrels yeah what more could you want like to win a world title on a wave like that too so um, yeah and then got carried up the up the um, road at Honolulu and had my mum and um, my stepdad Wayno there which was pretty special too they flew over and I'm not gonna get through you know? <laughs> No, wait. No, no, so much fun. Like, honestly, it's just such an amazing experience and, yeah, something I'll never forget, for sure. She was, you know, just surfing like some of the best I've ever seen her surf in Hawaii that year, so she was definitely deserving of the world title. The moment in Hawaii when she did win was really emotional and, yeah, all of us were so proud and so happy for her. We know that she worked really hard and that she just loves surfing so much and I think just the passion and energy she puts into this, into that, it was great to see the reward come out as a world champ. After winning a breakthrough world title in 2005, one of the greatest talents of her generation swapped contest rashies for baby nappies. Yeah, won a world title 2005, got married 2006 to Jace and yeah, and then, don't know, we just got a little bit clucky. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, look, obviously madly in love and next we were having a baby and I was like, well, this is like crazy, you know, it was a bit like, oh, what am I doing with the tour and surfing and whatnot, but yeah, just sort of went with it and um, yeah, had Mika, had a year off tour and then came back the year after, just travelled with Mika for a couple of years and yeah, did the tour with her and Jace and my mum and whoever else was around. <laughs> Juggling the responsibilities of motherhood with being an elite tour athlete at a time when there wasn't the support there should have been saw Chelsea ultimately disappear into the surfing wilderness. I think everyone was probably pretty disappointed that Chelsea left the tour as young as she did. She's yeah, just won a world title, but you know, we knew that that's what she wanted to do. That was really important to her to have a family and so happy for her that she uh, she did that as well. Yeah, I think even if she'd stuck at it a few more years, she probably would have won another title, giving Steph a little jab in there. After Chelsea won her world title, I think there was a lot of promises made to her that really didn't come to fruition and, and it almost soured her competitive career. And I think it ended prematurely. Let's just say financially it kind of got made for me, I suppose. And then having another baby. <laughs> but yeah, like obviously the year I came back, didn't have a sponsor anymore. That was massive to try and, yeah, compete um, first year back um, with a baby and have no, no financial support from sponsors. And then I was just like, oh gosh, this is like pretty mentally exhausting, you know, because it wasn't like, I could just go to each event, relax. It was like I had to make at least quarterfinals or better to be able to go to the next event, really. Um, that was just what, what it came down to. Yeah, and then I went, you know what? It's time to have just settle down and yeah, have a family and start a new chapter, you know? After the break, we take a look into Chelsea's new job working with Australia's best junior surfers.
Tweed on the far north New South Wales coast offers visitors every kind of attraction, from uncrowded beaches to world-renowned surf breaks and a beautiful river which winds its way through town and empties out into the Pacific Ocean. The Tweed also has a growing reputation for fresh produce and locally caught seafood. The rich volcanic soils produce exceptional tropical fruit and native delicacies like finger limes. You can lose yourself in some of the largest and oldest tracts of subtropical rainforest left on earth in the World Heritage listed Wollumbin National Park. So after leaving the tour, yeah, I've got three beautiful little girls and husband Jace and we live in Kingscliff now. It's a, a beautiful little town um, on the northern New South Wales coast and you know my eldest daughter Mika now is 12, Indy's nine and Stella's eight so yeah they're, they're growing fast and now I'm working at Surfing Australia working with the Talent ID Pathway kids so back in that little zone of yeah trying to get back I guess to the sport and trying to get you know the the groms in Australia and the kids in Australia to be the best athletes that they can be and you know try and get to the top of their game and win world titles. She's always had that love for surfing and has always been a great role model and mentor for other surfers because we need more female coaches and we certainly need more female coaches that have the surfing pedigree of people like Chelsea. So it's exciting to see her giving back to the grassroots movement and playing an active role in developing future champions from Australia. Yeah, it's been exciting just watching her inspiring a lot of young groms and um, just some of the world's best surfers in, in Australia too. So. Yeah, it's been great to have her in the office and down the beach. As a coach, just to um, see their focus and see where their head's at before they paddle out, what things are popping up in their mind, it really shows not only their strengths but their weaknesses. And as coaches, that stuff is really important for us to, to know where we can help the kids, what we can work on with them basically, and, and better them as athletes and as human beings. You know, it's a real credit to Chelsea because she's got so much information and so much skill and um, experience to pass on to the younger girls. They're, they're very lucky to have that um, with her living close to there and being able to get that position now. It's going to be an amazing thing for the girls that she's going to be getting to coach down there. Every day I go to work, I pinch myself because I'm like, you know, this is too good. This is the best job in the world, you know. I thought surfing was the best job in the world and, yeah, this is, this is pretty amazing to, to be on the the other side of it now and yeah hopefully helping these athletes yeah in their journey and yeah become the best in the world yeah <laughs> after the break it's finally time for chelsea to hit the water for her rivals heat opportunity here could definitely get skunked so yeah got to be on it <laughs> and I really really usually aren't that good with swell charts and this is the most I've ever looked at swell charts in my life <laughs> yeah it's on their bike riding oh, it's riding riding full day so yeah this is perfect so glad we got the ski ski driver <laughs> <laughs> no step offs, no whip ins. Um, but hey, like just to save these mummy arms would be all right. Oh, we'll be good. I think we're going to go put the ski in and then, um, yeah, jump on the beach. Surf his name back. Just drop straight, straight onto it. No mucking around. Whoa, here we go. Well, here we are at the Tweed Back Beaches and it's pretty much pumping. Chelsea Hedges, the 2005 world champ, she's been stalking these kinds of conditions and she's got what she waited for. She's here with her husband, Jason, on the ski. He's gonna be uh, running some instructions and uh, basically working as Chelsea's eyes on the lineup. But this should be an absolute spectacle. Chelsea is one of the most stylish, 
powerful, just technically gifted surfers of her generation. A backside tube riding extraordinaire. Chelsea Hedges, Smithy, one of those surfers who came through with so much fanfare, originally from Avalon on the northern beaches of Sydney. Her name back then was Chelsea Georgeson, but she uh, got married to a man who is a fisherman, a shaper, uh, a wonderful surfer himself. That's Jason Hedges, and uh, the two of them were a formidable team on tour. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what she does here at Rivals. Oh, this is a little nug. Kick stall into the pit. Oh, wow, that was sick surfing from the 2005 World Champ. As we see it on replay, just lining it up, comes off the bottom, little check turn, stalls, little bit of shade there. I mean, the judges are going to like it, I think. Yeah, Chelsea is one of the most visually pleasing surfers in Australian surfing history. Absolutely, Vaughn. She's looking as sharp as ever, still working as a surf coach at the Surfing Australia High Performance Centre taking care of some of the top athletes in the country. So just as sharp as ever, she packs oh. an absolute nugget and just wears the bulk of it on the dome. Look at this, just knifing it. Signature copybook technique. Wow. Oh, if only that wave cooperated, she would have come sailing out of that, sitting on the foam ball. Heavy, heavy wipeout. Look at this top view from the drone, and it is just kapow town. Absolutely pushed into the sand on these tweed beaches, and that one would have stung. So here goes Chelsea Hedges again. Nice technique, gets the tail release she's been famous for ever since she was a Grom. I remember calling an ISA World Games final at Duranbar Beach, one she won as a grommet. And uh, you could just tell Smivy the writing was on the wall that this woman would go on and become world champion one day, which she did in 2005. She's got that incredible rangy, sinewy body type that's become the prototype for success in the modern age, uh, a la Steph Gilmore. Uh, really just fits her body into the curve of the wave perfectly, generates so much power and just great technique, Vaughn. Amazing technique. Technique that fits the beaches, that fits the reefs. I remember in the early days of Roxy, Chels was just the Grom on board and mate, she would just get out there on those reefs and find so much vision. Well, there we have it, Vaughn. That was an absolute clinic. I loved it every moment. Chelsea Hedges just looking razor sharp, fitting her body to the curve of the wave, slashing, whacking, floating and packing a couple of nuggets. Couldn't agree more, Smivy. And if there's one takeaway from this great rival's heat of Chelsea Hedges, it's that we need to see more of her in the future. So funny when you think you've got too much, you think, ah, oh, there's so much time, you know, and the weeks go by and all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I've got like two weeks to do it. Obviously you want to wait for the best swells to come through and yeah, definitely left it to the last minute. I don't know, you know, there's like a good swell. I'd rather do that, you know, get a bit rumbled and tumbled and go for it sort of thing rather than go and surf two foot beachy, you know what I mean? Yeah, you got to ski, you got to use it. <laughs> Next week on Rivals, we head to the Sunshine Coast of Queensland for a look at Serena Brook. You've got to push, push the limits a little bit, like, you know, saucy, come on, tea tree.